I want to go over the solution for the stepwise regression problem in under multiple regression. And we had four variables. We had our dependent variable selling price, and we had three independent or predictor variables, square footage, age, and bedrooms. And we wanted to be able to determine how can we estimate or forecast the selling price when we use one, two, three of our independent variables. Now, we may use, as I indicated, three, we may indicate two, or we may use one. It just depends upon if we find a significant relationship by way of the p-value in relation to these independent variables and our selling price as our dependent variable. In under the stepwise approach, we will add one independent variable at a time, and we will do that by finding out which one has the highest correlation with our dependent variable. And that's why I asked you to go ahead uh, in this particular assignment to focus in on the correlation matrix. So um, correlation matrix, uh, I'll just kind of take you quickly through that, uh, our data analysis, and we will look for correlation and we will say, okay, uh, input the range. And of course, we're dealing the entire range. In this case, from A1 down to uh, D13. And up pops our correlation matrix. And in this particular case, you can see that, in other words, the correlation matrix is going to tell us two things. Number one, it's going to tell us which independent variable gets into the model first, second, and third. And it's also going to tell us, is there any collinearity, which simply means, is there any dependency between our independent variables? So the first thing is that, in other words, let's look at the collinearity. If we look at the collinearity, in other words, the correlation between square foot as an independent variable and bedrooms, we can see, oh, 79%. Our demarcation was 70%. Anything over 70% would indicate a potential problem, which simply means that our independent variables are not really independent of each other. There's a dependency. And if we look at square footage in bedrooms, okay, ah, 75%. Once again, over 70% a potential problem, colonarity problem. If we look at bedrooms and age, 48%. So once again, that's in, that is under that 70% demarcation percentage. So we would assume, okay, there's a, there's a rel they're relatively independent of each, each, each other. So in the assignment, yes, we do have an issue with colonarity. And that issue is looking at square footage, bedrooms, and square footage and age for potential problem. But uh, I simply wanted you to state, yes, colonarity does exist between square footage, bedroom, square footage, and age. The second part is, okay, which, which of our independent variables will get into the model first to test, second, and third? And we do that by looking at the correlation between our dependent variable and each of our independent variables as illustrated here. And you can see selling price, independent, our dependent variable, and square footage is 92%. We have a 92% relationship or correlation. 71% between square footage and bedrooms and negative 81% between selling price and age. Let me digress for a second. When we look at the coefficient of correlation, that measures the degree of the relationship. And that may take on any percentage between a negative one or 100% and a positive one or 100% inclusively. So the first one that's gonna get into the model is square footage. 
Of course, 93% relationship. The second one is not bedrooms, it's age. Age has 81%. But in this case, it's negative, which simply means that as the age of the home goes up, the selling price goes down or vice versa. I think some of you were confused with that negative or some of you were just looking at it from the standpoint on square footage, bedrooms, age, that's how we're going to get into the model. No, what gets into the model first, second, and third depends upon the degree of the relationship as measured by the coefficient of correlation. So in this particular situation, uh, I want you to say square foot gets in, then age, then bedrooms. So let's go back to our data. And now we want to make, start our taps, the stepwise approach. So from this standpoint, go back to our data analysis, go down to a regression. And in this particular case, our Y, which is our selling price, our independent variable, first step, will be square footage. And always put that labels. We want to know the labels to keep our life easier. And of course, we would go ahead and say, OK. And up will pop square footage, square footage. And so we can see um, what we have here, what I've highlighted in yellow, because that will be the test of relationship. We have our y-intercept, in this case is negative 29,786.8, plus our square footage of 75.79. So what we were trying to determine here is, is the relationship between square footage and selling price significant or not. And we do that, as I tried to explain in a previous video, is that in other words, it's like that null hypothesis once again. The null hypothesis would be there's no relationship between those two. The alternative, there is a relationship. We would establish a level of significance, 5% or 1%, and then the statement we would say, reject the null hypothesis that there's no relationship, right, if P happens to be less than the level of significance. So we're focusing in on the P, the slope of the line, because right now, from this particular model, since we've entered one independent variable, we would be saying selling price is equal to the intercept, this negative 29,000, plus the slope, 75.79 times the square footage. So we're focusing in on the slope of the relationship. If we can significantly prove that there is a relationship, i.e., we do have a slope, then we would say, guess what? Square footage is a good, good variable, is a good independent, is a good predictor variable, to utilize the forecast selling price. And of course, when we look at the p-value here, highlighted in yellow, 1.64854 to the negative 05, that simply moves, means move that decimal point to the left five places, and it is what? That p-value is less than our level of significance. So we would say, it's good. Square footage, square footage will remain. Then, we want to go back, we want to go back, and we want to pick up the second, and that's the age. So now what we're going to do, back to regression, put our selling price in, I should say the range for our dependent variable selling price, and then the range for square footage and age. We are adding age to square footage as indicated here indicate the labels and then of course uh, we'll do what we normally do get back in there and then we'll look at the results we will look at the results and once again 
we're coming back on here where I've highlighted in yellow. We want to test the significance. We just added age. So right now, if, if we were going to use age, our equation would be selling price is equal to the y-intercept 19,323 plus 59.11 times our square footage minus 721.62 times age. That would be our multiple regression equation. Well, we don't know yet. So what we have to do, we have to look at this, the p-value. We have to look at, is a slope? Well, we look at square footage. Okay, right? 0 0.01974. That is less than our level of significance. If we look at age, 13.85%. No, that is greater than our level of significance. So since the p-value is greater than our level of significance, we are saying there is no relationship, there is no significant relationship between age and selling price. So, what this is telling us is that we're not going to use age to forecast selling price under the, under the stepwise approach. It's not significant. Since age is not significant, we don't even have to go back and pick up bedrooms because if age doesn't get in the bedrooms is not going to get in so we can stop we can stop right here and say oh what is the best equation uh, to utilize well since we're going to eliminate age and by eliminating age we're definitely eliminated bedrooms we will end up with only one independent variable by way of the stepwise approach and that square footage. So the best equation, the best equation to utilize to forecast selling price will be square footage and that equation will be selling price is equal to the intercept, negative 29,786 plus 75.79 times square footage. That is the equation that we will use and you should have uh, utilized or written down for this particular assignment.